Hey chemistry students, this is video 6-2. We are going to talk about covalent bonding with molecular compounds. Our first objective here is to define a molecule and a molecular compound. So let's go ahead and take a look here. A molecule, we have a neutral group of atoms of covalently bounded atoms. Now this is most likely going to occur between a metal and a non metal. And here's an example. This here is a space filling model where we have two atoms represented as spheres basically stuck together and that is right there where our bond is occurring. For a molecular compound that is basically a, another compound whose simple, simplest units are molecules. Example here we have H2O. Everybody knows H2O as water, and it's really making it a compound because we are combining two different atoms. A molecule, this example here could be like O2. We have two atoms of oxygen here, two different atoms, and a total of three atoms bonded together makes it a molecular compound. A molecular formula, this is an example down here, shows the types and numbers of atoms combined in a single molecule of a molecular compound. So our example right here, we have C4 or CH4, this is methane, and we're going to learn how to draw these Lewis structures. And I also want to talk very briefly here, this is also a chemical formula. So if you don't know the definition of a chemical formula, basically it's the simplest way to represent atoms bonded together. Down here, these little numbers are our subscripts, and those tell us how many atoms are in that molecule. Next, I want to talk a little bit about why these bonds form, and we talked briefly in the last video. Bonds are going to form between atoms because stability reasons being bonded together, the atoms become more stable. So in this example here, we're actually looking at potential energy here, potential energy versus the distance between the hydrogen nuclei. Here we have two hydrogen atoms that are separated. There's really no uh, attraction or repulsion occurring between them. At this point, the attractive forces are bringing the atoms together. And if you can see, there's actually a drop in potential energy. At this point, the potential energy is at its lowest. So it's most stable here, where the attractive forces overcome the repulsive forces. And at this point, D up here, repulsion occurs between like positive and positive start repelling in this case and this is our bonded H2 molecule at this point. So it's important to know why atoms form bonds. Decrease in potential energy, more stable compounds are formed. Next I want to talk about the octet rule and this is really getting into drawing Lewis structures. The octet rule, write this down, compounds want to get eight. That's all you need to know get eight. They're going to get eight electrons around their nucleus that is most stable for that compound. There are a few exceptions. Boron and aluminum, they only really need six electrons around the nucleus. And if you look, and we're going to pull up here on the periodic table, boron and aluminum are in group 3A or group 13, which has three valence electrons. So sometimes they're going to share their three electrons or transfer them only to have six. Phosphorus and sulfur can have greater than eight if they're bonded to a highly electronegative element such as chlorine, oxygen, and fluorine. Let's take a look at how to draw some of these and talk about this electron dot notation. Basically, we're going to use dots to represent the valence electrons of an element. 
and how we determine the valence electrons of an element is quite simple. If you look over here on our example periodic table right here, we have our 1s or 1s right here with hydrogen. Now, hydrogen has, is going to have one valence electron, all right? Right here we know hydrogen has one valence electron and any other element in group 1 is going to have one valence of the electron. This is 1s1, 2s1, 3s1. So all of these guys have group 1 equals one valence electron. So that's important to know that. Group 2, this is group 2. They're going to have two valence electrons because it's 2s2, 3s2. Again, this is our s block. If we skip over here, this is our p block. And don't forget about helium over here, which is really a 1s2. That's one of the exceptions. It's just kind of out of place. Boron is in group 13 or group 3a, and it's going to have three valence electrons in its outermost energy level. Group 14 or 4a, four valence electrons right here. There's its four valence electrons, etc. 5a, 6a, oxygen has six valence electrons, fluorine then has seven and our noble gases over here all have eight. So how we draw the notation, let's for example here, let's say I want you to draw the notation, the electron dot notation for magnesium. So you're going to put the element symbol, it has two valence electrons, we represent electrons with little dots on the sides of the element. Example, if we had to do neon, neon has eight valence electrons, it's in group 8A, so neon and we're going to represent it with eight dots around it, two per side. And these here we kind of call our electron pairs. Each one of these here on this side, that is an electron pair. So that's important to know as well. And we use this in writing and drawing Lewis dot structures, which we have.